The following episode contains dialogue intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Previously on The Diary. The taxi driver took me back to my house where I thought I was safe. But all I did was tell him where I live. I heard the sound of the front door's knob being jiggled. Then I heard the lock being busted open. Then I heard the floorboards creaking as he tiptoed through the house. Then he climbed up the stairs and opened the door to my room. This is when I knew it was all real. No nightmare. Just plain and simple cruel reality as it sometimes happens. And this time it was my turn to face it. I visited her high school. Someone had followed me there. A girl. To protect her name, I'll just call her Dorothy. Dorothy wasn't a friend of my sister, but she had heard the rumors. And as I was sitting on a branch 12 feet above the ground, I saw my sister enter the park. I looked at Dorothy and said with a calm, but scornful demeanor. Oh, Dorothy, I am so disappointed in you. And so I scared her and made her fall back all the way down to the grass and dirt below us. Oh yeah, I heard the stories from your friend Dorothy. What friend Dorothy? She's not your friend? The Disney Channel cast wannabe? Ugh, as if. Dorothy will be okay. Phew, she didn't remember what happened. After that, we just chatted for a while. I was really enjoying our conversation. I said goodbye to Dorothy. We agreed to stay in touch because she's so cool. And then, My sister appeared at the top of the wooden fence, climbing over. So when she came off, I punched her in the face and knocked her out. Craig looked at me for a quick second and said, Come on, get in the car, let's go. We arrived at this old, abandoned-looking warehouse. Remember Fight Club? I was brought in by Tyler himself, and I am Marla. Nobody's questioning my presence or my identity. On the ground level, I got to the walk-in freezer. Bobby was asleep. On the ground, not hanging from his neck. Also, it's room temperature. Not even cold in here. I woke Bobby up to get some answers. He got really scared, so I quickly lifted my shirt up and showed him how I didn't have burn scars on my back. I am me, and not my sister. Did you close the door? Yeah. We're trapped in here now. The following takes place on July 27th, 2015. Dear Diary, After Bobby calmed down, I explained to him that everyone in the house thinks I am my sister, so we both need to keep this information to ourselves. I needed him to tell me all he could about her so that once someone finds me here, I could pretend like I was doing something she would typically do in here and just act like the door closed by accident. Hopefully, we'll be okay. He explained that my sister is weird. She won't let anybody else touch her but Craig. But Craig isn't turned on by her anymore because she isn't afraid of him and that's what he likes. So whenever she is here, she makes me have sex with her, but not really. She times it so well that I never really finish before Craig finds us together. So then he'll rage with jealousy, he'll beat the crap out of me, that will scare her, so then that gets him turned on, and then they'll do it right here in front of me. When he's done, he'll fling a spoonful of lye at me. You know, lye, from Fight Club, makes soap, burns the skin, flush it with vinegar, not with water. Holy nematodes, this guy is obsessed with that movie! Which, by the way, was wrong about that. Sodium hydroxide reacts with moisture, and while yes, vinegar will neutralize the reaction, it still is an exothermic reaction, which means it releases heat burning even more regardless of it being vinegar or water. And while vinegar might be more neutralizing than water, you will always have access to more water than vinegar. Your best bet is to shake as much lye off your hand first, and then pour as much water as you can so the heat caused by the reaction is absorbed by the water instead of by your skin and just keep the water coming until it's washed off you'll run out of vinegar before you even make a dent on the neutralization needed to stop the pain, which is why water is the better option. How do you know all that? Uh, I'm smart and I like science? God, I so wish I could tell him that and ruin the movie for him. Anyway, I don't have access to either here, so I just have to endure the pain. I mean, most of it misses me the majority of the time, but whatever does land on me, I just have to wait it out. So I do not want you to be found here any more than you want to be found here. I don't want to be beaten up and burned, and you don't want to arouse Craig. He was right. I did not want to pretend to be my sister through that. So what do we do? We're going to have to hide, close to the door. In the morning, a foot soldier will come in and serve me breakfast. I can start a fight with him. You'll have to come out from hiding as if you had just walked in after him. That's exactly what we did. 
Except the soldier was 100% sure he had closed the door after coming in, and that he didn't hear the door open. It took a while to convince him that he didn't hear it because he wasn't listening for it. He was fighting with Bobby, which I heard. That made me step in to see what was happening. He eventually believed me and let it go because I did help him get Bobby off him to prevent him from escaping, and I was able to exit the freezer. I went back up to my room, and Craig stopped me at the door. Where were you? Downstairs. With Bobby? No, but apparently he tried to escape. I heard some commotion, and I put an end to it. Our boy toy isn't going anywhere. I then saw Craig smile, and I knew that was my cue to close the door. He believes I am my sister. I just hope he doesn't punish Bobby for trying to escape. I need to get him out of here. I think I already know how from what I observed while walking around. I'm pretty sure I can do it, but I'm going to need some help. So I texted my friend Dorothy and asked her to meet me tonight outside the Fight Club house. Love, C. No one can save you.